Hello everyone. In today's quick tip, I'm going to show you when and why and how to use VST rack instruments. Alright, so I'm going to use my project in Cubase here to kind of demonstrate things. So let's say I'm building a song and I want to program a bunch of drums, like I want a full drum kit and then I also want percussion and all this stuff happening. Uh, what I like to use is Groove Agent. Now I can use multiple instances of Groove Agent and trigger some MIDI information within each one of those instances of Groove Agent. Or what I could do is I could have one instrument, one VST instrument, and have multiple uh, MIDI tracks and trigger the one groove agent with all those various MIDI tracks. So what I've chosen in this project, because it makes most sense, is to have multiple MIDI tracks uh, triggering one instance of groove agent. So this is a rack instrument. You're triggering one single rack instrument from various other MIDI sources. Now I'll explain a little bit. So I have a main drum kit that has all my samples, which is right here. It's the beat agent within this one instance of Groove Agent. And then I also have a percussion kit that has a bunch of percussion instruments. Now these here, this is all my drum MIDI. These are all selected to uh, output into this instance of Groove Agent. So I've selected that and I've also selected which MIDI channel to be triggering on. So I have them all on channel 1. Now if we go into Groove Agent, uh, here is the instance that I'm telling it to be sent to and here is the, uh, the MIDI track or the MIDI channel that I'm trying to trigger as well. And the percussion is under MIDI channel 2. So if you see in this percussion, I'm going to the exact same instance of Groove Agent, but it's being sent through channel 2. So it's triggering a different agent within Groove Agent. So if we, uh, let's have a little preview. So you can see this kind of organizes things. Like I can, I can separate all the MIDI information and I can do whatever I want, have separate MIDI tracks and MIDI information and just tell it where to go. Now I don't foresee that I would need any more drums, maybe a couple extra effect type sample things and I could add more agents here. If I fill up uh, all four of these agents and I need more, I can add more uh, rack instruments or I can add more track instruments. Alright, so now let's say I wanted to do this, the exact same uh, drum programming but by using track instruments. So first we have to add the track instrument. Now I can load up a, uh, a drum, a group of drum samples on this agent and I can take the exact same drum information Let's unmute this. And now all this MIDI information that is within this track is triggering the instrument that's on this exact same track. So instead of telling it, telling the MIDI information where to go, uh, I am now triggering whatever is attached to that same track. Um, you can see I can select different channels as well. So I can have another agent and I can trigger that agent by selecting different channels. There's that. Um, if I wanted to do like I did here is separate all these different uh, separate instruments like the kick, the snare, all that stuff. If I wanted to separate it in different tracks, I can do that too by opening up this show lanes and I would have all of these different instances on a separate lane and because each of these events is tied to a, uh, a pitch range that means it's actually triggering a different pitch range 
in the instrument you can see the different pitch, pitch ranges where it corresponds. Now if I do it like that, now you can see it's triggering the different pitch ranges which means it's triggering different instruments, kicks and snares. So there's that. Um, I can also send other MIDI information to this instrument. So I can send the kick to Groove Agent number one. If you go here, you can see Groove Agent one is the VST track. And then I send it to channel one. Same thing. Let's solo that. Now you can see it's triggering there. So there's, there's basically the same sort of capabilities. Um, it's just a different way of doing it. The MIDI information that's attached to this channel is necessarily going to trigger the instrument that's hooked up to here. Um, now let's also talk about the percussion. Let's say I wanted to trigger the percussion. I could, uh, I could add another uh, VST track instrument or I can go into this, add that percussion agent in here, and I can have more MIDI data that then triggers uh, channel two, MIDI channel two on that same instance. Uh, and then you can see all the stuff going on here. I could do it that way. Um, or I can have just a whole separate uh, instance of Groove Agent. So in conclusion, they're basically the exact same thing. You have one instance of Groove Agent, either in a track or a rack. You have basically the same sort of um, ability to trigger things within those instruments. Um, for me, it makes most sense to use rack instruments just because you set up the instrument as something that's going to be triggered by MIDI data and then it just sits there and then all you have to do is you just add a bunch of MIDI tracks trigger that instrument through the MIDI tracks and to me that makes the most sense the most sort of workflow sense um, and by doing this I'm sort of setting myself up to uh, have the least amount of different instances of those instruments um, just like Groove Agent you can do multiple different instances within one or sorry, multiple different sort of instruments and whatnot within one instance of Halion. Uh, and there might be other instruments like, uh, yeah, Contact. You can do multiple different instruments within one instance of Contact. And I think Reactor as well by Native Instruments. Uh, you can do it that way with those instruments. Um, but to me, it makes the most sense. That way, all of my MIDI data and stuff is not tied down to a certain uh, a certain instrument and then when I'm trying to send my extra MIDI information so in this case I have all my drums and my extra MIDI stuff is the percussion it's not tied to a single track kind of over here it's everything is all tied to just a bunch of rack instruments and it, it seems to be the best workflow for me and I think in that way I'm saving a little bit of RAM and CPU um, just necessarily by how I'm setting everything up and having less instances of those instruments. So hopefully that uh, didn't complicate things too much. And if you have any questions about maybe further details on how to set up racks and tracks or routing your MIDI data, your uh, MIDI triggering, all that kind of stuff, I can do a more in-depth tutorial. So leave a comment and let, let me know you want to see that. Um, and if you have any other general questions about what I showed in this uh, tutorial or this quick tip, then leave a comment below as well and I'll just answer it through the comment section. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you liked it. Leave a like if you did. If you want to see more of this kind of uh, quick tips, let me know. Even hit that subscribe button and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.